so actually I am I do see something on edge doc now um, where Christian just wrote C minutes at um, and I guess that's it's a, it's a different um, it's it's an it's another edge doc document so okay Mm, okay, right. And so why so are you not... Both of them. One was created by Lead Echo and the one was created by Data Tracker? It seems weird that it's got the whole notes, blah, 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 in the other one, and then random number. Oh, well. Whichever works. Yeah. Well, in my case, feel free to to copy paste what I I brought um, in whichever Notepad. Uh, I mean, Hedgehog. <laughs> I opened. <laughs> I I think I followed the link from the um, the invitation of the data tracker. Okay, so maybe. Yeah, let's start now. Um, so again, if you have any anything to, um, if you have anything to say, um, just jump into the discussion. Um, this is an um, an interim meeting of ACE. It is subjected of the note well. Um, if you're not aware of the note well. Um, we should have had a, a slide on that, but uh, let me know. Uh, I see someone in a queue. You want to say something? See Young? Uh, we're not hearing you if you're I saying something. Hello, hello. Uh, what is hello? the topic of tonight's meeting? So, um, that's on the agenda. Um, but now I am unable to see the agenda because. <laughs> um, So oh, okay, right. Thank you. So, um, so I mean, um, what we, we we're doing is a status of the working group, and there is one presentation, I think, which is from um, Marco. He's going he's going to make an update on the key group com and key group com score. Um, and uh, I don't know if uh, Garan has a pres uh, intent to present <laughs> something. Yes, I, I uploaded very late some slides okay. here, but I, I think you need to accept them somehow. Or oh, okay, right. Yeah, I'll do that then. Um, so, so that's uh, as far as I know, that's the two presentation we are having. So let's start with the update. So where we are, I mean, this is my view. I am happy if you, I mean, um, if you have uh, other things to add. So um, CMPV2, I have the impression that uh, this is um, in, uh, in the plate of the, our AD. So um, what would be nice is that um, we, do, uh, we do not delay that too much so that we can follow. I mean, the draft follows what is being done on CMPV3 with lamps. So, but that's uh, currently in our, in our AD uh, to handle that. Uh, key group com is going to be updated um, today um, um, <laughs> with Marco's presentation. But currently, we have the key group com that is submitted to the ISG. At I mean, at least for a, quite a long time. Uh, I think it's two hundred days, uh, something like that. Two hundred um, and twenty. Um, and key group com OS score. Um, there is some synchronizations to be done with score. 
Um, but that's going to be explained in more detail with Marco. Um, unless Marco wants to add something right away. No, that's a great overview. Thanks. OK. I see um, um, Sion and Hendrik in the line. Sion, please. Do we have a problem with the queue? Why? Why you delete some? You why did you I just said you delete? Uh, you you said that you delete some. I I wanted to know the rule the reason. Why did you delete some? Uh, what did I deleted? Um... No, I, I think there is a misunderstanding um, um, between, um, I mean, it, it's a problem of a, a edge node, edge doc. So we have different documents that are uh, linking each together. And um, um, that's, a, that's, a, that's all, but we did not delete anything unless, is there, is, is there anything you're missing? Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. So please, Andrik. Yeah. Um, thanks, uh, Daniel. I was just wanted to ask um, on the CMP of co-op draft. I know it is in the AD review, but I haven't seen any any updates since since a while, and uh, just wanted to to yeah check whether I missed something or whether there is um, still work ongoing. I think the current draft version is outdated. In the meantime. Yeah, so um, this is actually we. I have been trying to reach um, the authors. Um, they were telling us that they they were uh, committed to uh, submit an update, uh, but that was three months ago. Um, I, I mean, um, I know Paul um, asked me to clarify this uh, synchronization with CMPV3. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, at that point, I, I think the only thing we were um, um, we were um, s trying to prevent is that uh, this draft being ahead of CMPv3. Uh, for um, the only concern was just um, 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 the IANA registration at some point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, but I think we are far from that. Um, I, I, do, I do not have uh, the impression that this document is going to be um, uh, moving ahead. Um, but I don't think it's blocking for CMPv3. Am I correct? Yeah, currently it is blocking uh, the uh, CMP oh. updates draft. And um, mm. there was some things with the IANA registration on the well-known um, path uh, to be, yeah, aligned and clarified based on um, the AD review feedback. We did that in some month ago. And in the meantime, CMP updates where this is, um, the IANA registration is done, is um, already done and um, ready for publication, but also waiting for uh, CMP updates to be um, processed. Okay. Okay, and what is the blocking aspect of that? Is that a IANA registration it's, or it's, uh, the the sections, the references with regard to the IANA registrations, right? Okay, and could we move that to a CMP update, or um, it, does it has to stay in the co-op transport? Um, CMP updates is just updating the um, HTTP transfer. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, we cannot um, 
at topics regarding um, co-op transfer there. Okay. Th this is why okay. th there was no, no draft on co-op transfer before, and this is the reason why we have this draft. <laughs> okay, so um, one thing I, I mean, if the document is not um, moving um, um, as we expect, um, would it be something you, you, you could consider um, editing the document and um, moving the document uh, forward? I, I could um, imagine supporting the authors. I already was in touch with Moid um, here and then and uh, um, offered support, but he, he said no support needed and he will come up with an update, but I haven't, haven't seen anything. Yeah, okay. So I take that on my side. Um, I will try to push for, um, to clarify if the update can be published. Um, I mean, um, I, I'm planning by the end of this month, um, this month being um, probably July or June. Um, so yeah, uh, I will try to make that. And worst case, um, I will try to see if we can um, um, put you as a co-author so um, you can move the draft. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to support that because um, also for the light white CMP profile document, we would need this draft. Otherwise, we would need to apply um, changes and, and um, carve out the CMP related stuff. Okay, right. Yeah. Yeah. And I will also try to push um, our AD uh, to move the document a little bit faster. I, I think the the token was with Moit to update with regard to the feedback from the AD review, and um, I think that is where where the draft is is got stuck. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That 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 is correct. But um, I want him to be aware that when he receives back the token, is not. Um, okay, thanks. <laughs> I mean, we should speed up the the delay between the the the. Mm -hmm. the, the uh, query response and that kind of uh, delay. But yeah, I will do that uh, right after the meeting. And okay. feel free to uh, to contact us, the chairs, if um, there is anything that is uh, not um, as you expect. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Daniel. Thank you, Hendrik. So uh, I, I still see Xion in the in the in the queue. I'm wondering if you want to add something, or if it's an old hand. Okay. So um, extended DTLS authorize. So to for that purpose, um, my impression is that we are just missing a procedure uh, which is IPR related. So we are trying to clarify that with the co-authors. Um, Co-op IP, um, I mean, it has been submitted. So we are basically waiting for um, the review from the AD. And so um, the current working group is um, uh -huh. uh, work. I'm hearing someone. Does anyone? Have... Okay. So um, the current working group is um, is focused on three documents, which is the revoke token notification, okay. OS core, um, GM admin, and the PubSub profile. I'm wondering if Sigdem wants to say something about the PubSub profile. Sure. Um... The previous version basically addressed the architectural change so that we aligned better to key group com <coughs> terminology with KDC and authorization server. It also handles the previous issues about authorization requests um, and it was kind of left there. Now I'm working to align the document further with key group com to explain how we interface to the KDC beyond join request and response. Currently, the remit of the document is just explaining authorization 
to be able to participate in a group plus key requests and responses. Um, but the interface requires to understand how to evict group members as well as rekeying, which is not addressed in the current document. So that's one of the things that I'm working on to define. And uh, in summary, basically making sure that we the profile addresses all the requests required conditions that the profile needs to meet to be able to be considered as key group com profile. Um, there are a few issues with the document because it uses uh, cryptographic constructs that were that are not currently very up to date, and I have to resolve with uh, Francesca some of our choices. Uh, for instance, in use of COSA keys and COSA encrypt zero um, structures. Um, and um, so there, there will be a new version, hopefully, once I align the document, but we'll, there will be still to-dos in those document. And then I'm hoping yet another version after I get the, you know, the working group uh, comments on or Francesca's comments on the uh, changes that need to be made for those to-dos. So that's my update at the moment. Okay, very good. One of the things that I'm also thinking about is that the document was revised so that it gave kind of an equal voice to both COAP and MQTT. I actually now looking at how the KDC interface works, um, would like to put MQTT on a kind of a secondary stage. Uh, it may be a, a solution drafted because compared to the MQTT TLS profile where HTTP-based handshake is uh, supported, um, this is basically requiring a co-app-based KDC interaction uh, that needs to be supported to uh, provision the clients with the correct keys and et cetera all the time which might be a stretch. So uh, I'm thinking of focusing the document more on COAP and then adding a maybe an optional support for MQTT, given that there is a actor that would talk COAP on behalf of the MQTT clients. So that's another thing that I'm, I've been toying, uh, thinking about. OK, perfect. Anyone wants to add something about the um, no? So um, I'm uh, I, I'm I'm going to ask Logan to maybe confirm that we have. Um, okay, I don't see all the slides. Uh, um, I'm I'm going to do a refresh. Okay, so we have all the presentations. Before we do the presentation, I'd like to see the Notwell slide. Um, maybe Logan, can you, you probably have to uh, validate um, the Notwell slide. I just uploaded it. Maybe I did receive something, no? No, I'm gonna check. Logan, can you see the, the slide I submitted? Well, I don't see any, so please be, please be aware that the Notwells the Notwells applied to this meeting, and um, I suppose uh, it's going to be solved when Marco will present his uh, presentation. So go ahead, Marco. Yes, thanks. Uh, for what is worth, I do see the not well slides. Oh, you do see the not well material. Yeah, it's there. Uh, Joran's slides are not visible there yet. 
or current slide or not? Okay. So can I present from the uploaded yeah. PDF slide set? Yeah, so just now, do you see my note well or do you see the note of a slide? No. No. I have to, um, so, so how do we go there? Um, should I go in the presentation view or? Okay, then I misunderstood. You are going to share the slides from your screen or something. Yeah, no, so okay. I mean, share, share the note well and then take the, your slide. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so, so Marco, I expect you to show uh, the not well, and then you go on with your slide. I see. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, well, anyone <laughs> can, in principle. Sure. <laughs> it's because I, I thought you you had taken the hand on the presentation. Never mind. I can share my screen. Okay. Can you grant me permission? Oh yeah, yeah. Do. Okay. So I have to. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I wanted to avoid this, so I, I thought you already had taken the permission. <laughs> well. Um, okay. This is the not well, everyone. Okay. So if you have any question, please raise them now. <laughs> I don't see any questions. So, um, Marco, you can go with your presentation. Sure. Here it is. Um, so this is a consolidated joint update of the two drafts, Kigurkom and Kigurkom Oscar. Um, I submitted an update for both of them uh, last week. Uh, about Kigurkom, uh, yes, it has been in a review since end of last year, I think. And I had a few um, updates in the queue for a while, and I hesitated because I didn't want to confuse Paul. Uh, but I had the opportunity in Philadelphia to discuss about this with Daniel and Paul, and it was fine to um, incorporate anywhere uh, anyway these changes after, as Paul suggested, uh, double checking again with the working group. So that's why my my mail to the uh, mailing list in July and no objections were received and the result was then the, the follow-up update uh, of version 16. Um, referring to that mail, uh, it was mainly about two um, conceptual updates uh, named update one and two in the mail. Uh, one about um, a change in the way it is possible to optionally uh, signal in the scope semantics and the access token and uh, now considering only Cbor tags like uh, building on what is defined in, in Cbor file magic, um, and then update you about um, relaxing a bit the restrictions on the TOID uh, parameter when using a, a AIF to express a scope. Uh, anything else was pretty much editorial and in the queue since um, Joran's review of the other document, uh, Kigrucom Oscar, and that was also reminded uh, in that mail. And on the first update, uh, again, we were uh, having already uh, the optional possibility to explicitly signal the semantics uh, of scope in the access token only, uh, where I can remind that um, scope is basically by string wrapping an array of scope entries, let's say one per group, and then in turn can be uh, relying on AIF on a more simple textual format. Now, the old approach was about having one Cbor tag uh, once and for all registered and used uh, uh, to signal the fact that we were doing this kind of thing at all. Uh, and then having basically a, another layer of wrapping where together with scope, we were transmitting also an integer uh, to be uh, registered for the specific uh, semantics of scope to use. But then at some point we had um, an alternative proposal from Christian, uh, thanks a lot. I think it was really a good idea. Uh, was issue 144 uh, now adopted here, where basically we got rid of the integer. Uh, there's only um, one Cbor tag per semantics um, to be possibly registered and used to tag a scope to indicate uh, its semantic. Uh, I said possibly registered because uh, in most of the cases, I expect the tag to be um, already uh, registered um, anyway. 
because uh, especially if you use uh, AAF and define uh, related media type parameters for uh, the TOID and TPERM of the specific data model, that is supposed to result in the registration of a core content format, which in turn, as per RFC 9277, um, will result in the registration of an associated CBOR tag. And that's the CBOR tag we would use uh, to signal the, that semantics of scope. So the notation becomes clear and, and the practical signaling becomes um, simpler. That was update one. Uh, as to uh, update two, uh, I said it was about relaxing uh, the expected encoding of uh, TOID, especially if AIF um, is used uh, to describe scope entries. We were really uh, strict to expect TOID to be, no matter what, a CBER text string. Uh, I relaxed it a bit in saying that, well, uh, that's indeed the case to expect uh, in case we uh, define an AAF data model intended, like in this document, uh, to cover the roles uh, that joining nodes want to have in the group. So nothing changes for the main cases we have had in mind uh, all along, meaning joining nodes. Uh, but it's something useful for um, a data model used um, in OSCORE GM admin, which in turn extends the data model defined first of all in KeyGroup on OSCORE, where we can have scope entries for uh, admin users uh, to mm, define operations that they can perform as administrators of groups, where TYD uh, out of a discussion at ITF 113 uh, maybe not necessarily a CBOR by string, but something different to express uh, patterns of group names um, rather than an exact name, or as an extreme case, uh, even a wildcard. But again, nothing really changes practically for the, the, the main case we care the most about joining nodes. Uh, yeah, I don't go through this, just for the reference, this is a list of uh, the editorial related updates where um, consistent with a number of other documents and the meaning of the parameters, I renamed uh, parameters, uh, messages, and some specific uh, URI path uh, segments. Okay, and that was KeyGroupCom. Uh, on KeyGroupCom Oscar, uh, we actually had a first revision already for um, the July meeting, uh, which was mostly about addressing the Working group was called comments we received from Joran. Thank you very much for that. And it was mostly about uh, restructuring the table of content of the document. And I'm pretty happy with the current results. I, I think it reads uh, way better uh, than before. Uh, and also about giving uh, some clarification of uh, what exact to pick from uh, the COSI algorithm registry uh, to refer to an HKDF algorithm, uh, just like the way the OSCOR RFC does. Um, Consistent with things I mentioned before uh, and following a discussion with, with Christian uh, in Vienna at ITF 113, uh, there was also a revision of the um, AF data model defined here uh, to work exactly as it was supposed to work already for the sake of this document, uh, meaning joining nodes, uh, but written in a way that uh, it can be extended uh, and in fact is extended um, in the ACEGM admin document where again, the same data model is extended uh, to make it possible to have some scope entries uh, instead expressing um, authorized operations for uh, group administrators. And uh, like we discussed also um, in Vienna, uh, you may in principle have a single scope in the same token uh, containing a mix of um, scope entries for uh, a joining node and uh, some other scope entries instead for an administrator and they can be distinguished and, and they can potentially uh, also coexist. But for the sake of this document, yeah, it was about revising uh, the data model to be still a single one uh, extended in the other GM admin document. And that happened for the July meeting basically where we did a meet. Uh, but then I made a second update uh, last week. Uh, this is a relatively minor update and it was mostly uh, to ensure consistency with uh, the one I presented before uh, for key group com. So mostly uh, alignment in names uh, and URI path segments uh, and so on, and uh, adapting the text related to the optional signaling of the scope semantic, semantics with the CBOR tag. And I also noted that uh, some text related to uh, when the DTLS profile is used between the joining of the group manager uh, requires some clarification. 
And now in case the uh, access token is specifically transported uh, during the detail uh, centric message rather than before separately, uh, I specify clearly where exactly the token should be put in which exact message, depending on using uh, version 1.2 and 1.3 of DTLS, uh, consistent with what the DTLS profile uh, says. And that's it. So to summarize on Kigrucom, uh, I have no other pending actions I'm aware of, and we wait for the AD review. Uh, for Kigrucom Oscar, it's most important consistent with Kigrucom. Again, I don't have pending actions here either, but uh, I just wonder if there were more comments to be um, expected from Yorano or anyone. Uh, other than that, yeah, we mentioned before the need to sync with uh, core uh, that was suggested by uh, Francesca some time ago. It was about requesting publication at the same time of three documents, um, Kiru Kamos, core in ACE, and two documents in core, uh, where for Core group on this is one of those. It's a working group last call. We are expecting some more minor comments to incorporate, and we are expecting that uh, a first wave of comments that we uh, addressed with the latest resubmission are actually uh, good enough to proceed. Uh, the other document is um, Oscar Group Com. Uh, it's in waiting for Shepherd write up, so waiting for that and the Shepherd review. Uh, we have a pending action uh, for uh, us as co-authors to work on a new version anyway, uh, where we plan to specify better uh, how response messages are supposed to be uh, handled. Uh, so we expect at least one more revision. Uh, uh, on the good side, uh, that update is, I believe, not supposed at all to have any impact on Kigru Kamal score um, anyway. And that should be the last slide, yes. Thank you. I guess you're still with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go oh. ahead. Um, I suspect Sion is not in the queue. Are you in the queue? So I will remove you from the queue. Um, seek them, go ahead. I'm online. Thank you. Sorry. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, Marco, this is not a question related to the presentation now, but uh, a general question to the ACE Key Group Com, now that I'm reading it in detail and fresh in my memory. Um, in the return response, uh, uh, join response, there is a creds parameter. And if you have the creds, you have to have peer, you must have the peer roles and peer IDs. Uh, for the specific profile for the pub sub, there are very distinct roles, like pubs are only the ones who have the creds and subscribers can on, are the only ones who would be asking. So the peer roles is uh, kind of a space taking thing when the um, profile is very clear when and which roles could be asked for um so it would be an array of pop 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 for the all the keys received possibly it, could this be avoided or why was the peer rules a must and uh could it be a may <laughs> or should or something more <sighs> than must? do you mean because you can imply the only role involved anyway yeah, subscribers, yes, exactly. So there are very distinct uh, steps each of the type of roles can take. And pubs are the only ones allowed to provide credentials to the KDC, the way it's written now. And the subscribers are the only ones to request these and pubs shouldn't, et cetera, et cetera. So um, when you return the response and you have the creds parameter, the, uh, the peer roles would be only containing pop, 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 basically, for each of the credentials returned, which to me is a space taking thing because the profile defines very well which role is allowed to do that anyway. So I was thinking whether there was a reason behind making that a must, basically. 
Well, the reason I believe was we couldn't think of any exception to make it a should. It, 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 the idea was to pair the public key with the exact role or roles associated with that um, yes. authentication yeah, credential I can, for I can, data checks. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely see the the role of the IDs, which makes a. Uh, but yeah, in this, I guess I provided the exception now. In this one, there cannot be anything else but the pub role anyway uh, for this. And so it will be just sending redundant information in an array that is as long as the publisher list for that particular group. So it's to me a space taking thing, but just wanted to clarify whether this is something that was strongly a must for some reason in the document. I prefer to double check again by gut uh, should should work fine anyway, especially if we point to this exact exception. Um, please send me a mail uh, describing this and I will check again uh, the detail. Um, in case, well, I'd like to hear from more people in the working group and if it's fine to you to um, postpone possibly an update to when processing the AD, re the AD review just to avoid uh, yet another resubmission only about this uh, around this time interval. Okay, I'll send you an email and uh, describe what I mean. Um, and uh, yeah, otherwise it's okay. It's not affecting the correctness of the operation. It's just an overhead in the response message at the moment. Yeah, we'll have to introduce something uh, possibly in the PubSA profile again say well you, you need to say if you do that and if, if you don't it's because you can build on a safe assumption like yeah the, the one you were explaining the role is implied thank you any feedback on this anyone by the way Garan? Do you want to say something? Yeah, I, I just wanted to briefly comment on Marco's update. I've looked at the uh, update and my comments are are addressed. Well, I like the new structure very well, uh, very much. And um, so that was the only thing I wanted to say. I don't have any more input at the moment. And um, yeah, that's it. Looks good. Thank you. I'm wondering if uh, Xi Yang would like to add something. Uh, not uh, any uh, question. Okay, thank you. Okay, so so I, I restate I don't have any pending actions uh, left on uh, on Kiru Komoskor either. It's up to the chairs about proceeding this. Yeah. So <clears throat> um, what I'm hearing is that I mean the document is ready to move to the ISG. Yeah. Of course. Uh, please keep in mind that original plan about syncing. Um, I, I'm co-authoring both those documents in course, so um, uh, it's something you may want in case to discuss with uh, Carson and Jaime. Okay, sure. So, um, well, Carsten is is um, is here. Um, I'm wondering uh, what would you like. What would be the easiest way I can help in that? Is that a question for Karsten? Yeah, the, the core co-chairs. Okay. okay. <laughs> I mean, a two-third of the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry, I have been listening with about 0 0.6 years. So, <laughs> what's the question? So, uh, so, so the question was, um, how can we is the the proceeding of the the the, the group com or score 
um, because it needs some synchronization with the core working group. Um, um, so I'm wondering um, what would be the, the way to move that forward? Well, uh, let me remember which of the documents this was. There, there, there are many documents that um, are... Could you please grant me a screen sharing again? I had one slide. Yeah, 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 sure. Uh, summarizing this, I can show it again. Thanks. There it is. Uh, okay. Yeah, the the bottom part, Karsten. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can say it. Uh, maybe discuss this this morning, but. Uh, I don't understand my notes, so <laughs> please go ahead. <laughs> well, as I said, the original plan was to request publication of key group com all score in parallel with group com bis and all score group com uh, in core. And we expect some little work to do on the two core documents anyway, summarized here that I believe will not impact key group com all score anyway. So the thing is we want to stick to the most rigid plan possible of really um, sending out all three of them together or if the ACE document can start moving on anyway, I suppose. Thank you. So I will probably so I, I will probably move um, send it to the ISG and um, um, or sh sh do you want to have a review because I mean um, I mean I guess the that was my next question um, I was ready to expect a shepherd review <laughs> together with a shepherd right up but it's of course up to you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 Sure. I mean, the shepherd review. Um, that's. Um, we. We have to do that to move that forward. But um. Um. I'm wondering. Um. I mean, we can write the shepherd review to move that and let then leave it to the AD to handle the synchronization with with um with core or we can um. I, I, I am more in favor of something that is a little bit more proactive and say, yeah, core has reviewed the document. So I, I was basically thinking, do you think we should have um, um, a, a two, two weeks period uh, open to core? Well, I, I think, think the, the, the best way to actually get some synchronization here um, is uh, to, to use the fact that we don't have a shepherd for that yet. And uh, we might actually find someone in core who was shepherding okay. this document. So we have um, essentially both working groups uh, in, in the loop. Okay, perfect. I'm going to ask for a shepherd in core. Okay, good. I do that. Thank you very much. Perfect. So we are done with that document. Daniel, it works for you. I, I prefer you share the screen for the next one. At least I can look at the Miteco interface. <laughs> in okay. 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 I'll Thanks. try. So I'm um, meeting material. So now I have. Oh. I, I constantly open the, so I don't remember how we, so I, should I go into the presentation view? Oh no, I asked the screen share. Okay. Uh, Okay, so you see my screen.
please go ahead, Karen. Okay. Um, so I'm I'm going to talk about the new profile of the ACE OAuth framework, uh, which was recently published as RFC 9200, uh, together with uh, two profiles, the DTLS profile uh, 9202 and the OSCOR profile 9203. So you can you can show slide two. Oh, it's a slide you see at the bottom here, on on this screen. Um, so basically, we um, uh, if you compare with the previous profiles, um, starting with the Oscar profile, and that is um, using the OAuth framework uh, to define the access to resources on the resource server with an access token associated to a symmetric key and then uses OSCORE to protect the communication and authenticate um, if the client and server are using this symmetric key. Now, this profile instead is associating the access rights to an asymmetric key or, or rather an authentication credentials, an, authentic, an authentication credential and uses ad hoc to, um, to authenticate and to derive a shared secret which is used to set up OSCORE. So it's very much like um, the DATLS profile is already doing in case of public keys, but it's using ad hoc and OSCORE instead of the DTLS handshake and TLS uh, and the record layer protocol. So the difference uh, between this new draft and 9203, the OSCOR profile is that it supports a more strict trust model where you're using public keys instead of shared secret keys. And the difference with the DTLS profile is that it supports a lower overhead compared with using ad hoc instead of DTLS. Uh, for the handshake, next slide, please. Another a uh, way of comparing them is just looking at the protocol overview. Most parts will, are the same in all three uh, protocols, so all three um, profiles. If you compare first with the details profile, we have the pro token provisioning is identical. Uh, of course, we use detail uh, in, in this draft, we use ad hoc instead of DTLS handshake, and we use OSCOR instead of record layer. And comparing to 9203, the OSCOR profile, um, there's a different uh, token provisioning um, compared to because the nonce and, and an ID is, is exchanged in, in the OSCOR profile. Uh, there is no ad hoc exchange, but uh, the OSCOR security context is derived in both and used in the same way. So that's the similarity. Next slide, please. Some other properties of this new profile, which is then given the name coop-adhoc-oscore. It supports the update of access rights, just as the other two profiles. And um, it introduces a new term called token series, which would have been useful for when, when, when we describe the properties of the other profiles uh, to highlight the, sort of the relationship between uh, new access tokens and, and updated access tokens. It also supports update of security context without updating access rights. So either using ad hoc key update, uh, which is defined in, in, in ad hoc, um, or using the key update for OSCOR, which is a, a core draft. Um, it supports the use of authentication credentials in the same way as ad hoc. So you can either include them in the access token or you could reference them which is useful because you could lower your overhead size of the access token. Um, and it specifies a data structure called ad hoc information, which provides information about the, the particular application profile or ad hoc that's used. And uh, like what method is being supported or is message for being used and so on. And those that information may be included in the message exchange before running ad hoc, i.e. The, the part where we have the, ad, uh, the access token provisioning. Um, and it's also registering a lot of parameters and claims to support this 
It's a little bit IANA registration. Next slide, please. Uh, and there are plenty of examples uh, and quite detailed. And there are examples on optimizations. Um, so, for example, instead of do doing the post to authorization info, you could include the access token in ad hoc message one directly in the uh, external authorization data field. And uh, so that's one uh, is one one round trip less. That's analogous to what is done in the DTLS profile with the PSK identity. And also it's incorporating the uh, ad hoc and OSCOR combi combined protocol, um, which is in the, in the core draft. Uh, so and and that could be combined with with the access token provisioning. So you actually have a two round trip for provisioning the access token, um, authenticating, and sending the first OSCOR access uh, request, OSCOR protected access request. Uh, there is also an interesting alternate flow um, wherein the AES is provisioning the author, uh, access token instead of the client. So uh, there are some some examples of papers who have been studying this for for um, more efficient provisioning of access rights. So so that's something that we uh, so 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 what in principle the, the flow would be like this: that the client requests an access token to the AES, and the AES then posts the access token to the RS and then notifies the client that the access token is provisioned. And that's something that we could actually generalize. Either we specify it only here, uh, or we could generalize it to apply to other drafts of the framework. And yeah, so that's next step. Um, this is already very detailed. Um, we think this is more or less ready for, for someone to review it. Um, there is a minor update on uh, information about support for kudos and um, that we might want to add but otherwise we don't have any other proposed technical additions comments questions so i mean the this document is a, a candidate for um to be adopted so i mean um, i'm wondering uh, who has read the document Who's interested in uh, reviewing the document? Who is interested in contributing to that document? Well, I, I, I suppose the the author are at least interested. <laughs> sure. As author, but of course I am. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I can probably volunteer the authors of the DTLS profile who are on vacation at, at this point, but I'm sure they will want to look at this. Okay, right. Thanks, Carson. Okay. Um, so, I mean, the, the on vacation, is that a one week or, I mean, I, I can start a call for adaption on the mailing list. Um, is it more appropriate I do it now or should we wait a little bit? No, it's fine. They should be back by the end of the week. Okay, so I, I, I will check with my co-chair and uh, we probably start a call for adoption. One thing I'm a little bit worried is that um, um, regarding the who is going to work on that uh, document, because I can see um, uh, Marco, um, John, and Guerin, but um, um, I mean, Marco is uh, more than busy with uh, the token and um, and the admin draft. So I would prefer to make sure that um, he, he's not too much involved into that um, document. So that um, I mean, the other document are not going to be slowed. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely going to be involved in this. Uh in this draft and progress it. So, okay. So that's, that, perfect. that's, uh, that's a commitment from myself. Okay, good. 
Oh, there's also a comment in the chat from Christian. Uh, read it, can review later. Okay. Read it. Read it. <laughs> read it. Can review so. later. Yes. Okay, right. So um, I will check with my co-chair and issue the call for adoption. Um, and then, yeah, that's um, that's why we are. So um, now regarding the milestone, um, I'd like to understand. Um, so uh, I mean, um, so for, for core, I mean, um, the key group come, what remains to be done is ask for a shepherd. So um, I'm considering that um, people in core are so um, um, involved that uh, the chairs will have to to select um, among the the candidates uh, one of the uh, shepherd writer. Um, so that seems to be done for now. Um, I'm wondering about the pub sub. Uh, can we see that uh, to be sent to the IHG by, by the end of the year? Um, it will depend on how we resolve the to-dos. Um, mm. I'll let you let me um, do a, another version, and then I'll uh, let the group know how my discussion with um, my co-author Francesca has gone, and then I'll be speaking more surely. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I think that's a good start. Uh, if we have a, a new version and we can have that discussion on the mailing list um i don't want to uh, promise at the end of the year it will be ready and still i'm expecting to clarify a few issues so i just don't want oh to yeah, yeah sure I mean, yeah let's let's aim it as a soft target um okay that's fine my yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> perfect um and now we, and, and we have the token in admin so um what would be a reasonable target from uh for, for those documents, Marco? Uh, GM admin is uh, more advanced. Uh, I think after one, two iterations more, it should be ready for working group plus call. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for, at least. Uh, Revoke token notification requires some more work, of course. It's not um, as that mature, but it's progressing well, I think. So, to so be three iterations, <laughs> it means. Um... Tomorrow, after tomorrow, and the end of the week? No, no well, uh, <laughs> after the London meeting, uh, okay. somewhere in between the, the London and the, um, what's that, Yokohama meeting? <laughs> OK. That yeah, the we'll say, so, uh, <laughs> let's say beginning of next, next year. Yeah. It's something reasonable. Talking of notification, I expect will require some some more some more work. But uh, as I said, it's proceeding well, I think, and it started later. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, uh, no. I mean, it's just for me to to have an, um, a timeline being set. Sure. Right. Okay. So perfect. Um, unless anyone uh, has something to add. Um, we can adjourn the meeting, I think. There was a request from Michael. So this is your again. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry. There was a request from Michael Richardson in the mailing list to uh, on one of the A drafts. I don't think we have time to discuss it now, but there was a question. Maybe we should just continue the thread on on the status of that draft. Okay. So what was the so that's a question on the mailing list? Yeah. You could look at the question from Michael recently, one week ago. OK. Also. I thought he would be here okay. to talk about it. But I thought I saw him in the beginning, but he's not. Um, oh, he's not here. In the meeting. OK. OK, right. Um, yeah. So let's uh, go back to the, to the mailing list with that. OK, right. Um, then I wish you a um, happy evening, happy morning, depending on where you are. <laughs> Daniel, I, I have a final question. Will we meet at ITF 115? Um, I, I think it's unlikely um, because uh, none of the chairs, um, I mean, it, current, uh, current plans are that none of the chairs will actually meet in London. OK. Um, so um, 
it's unlikely that we meet um, and we probably um, work uh, with interim meetings. Understood. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? I'm hearing none, so maybe I wish you a good day for for real this time. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.